Hello everyone, welcome to First Code Academy. Today we are going to make a simple project on an inventor called Pumpkin and Turkey Smash. Pumpkin and Turkey Smash is a simple game in which a pumpkin and a turkey pop up randomly on the screen. And when you try to touch it, you'll gain points. One point for a pumpkin and five points for a turkey. If you miss touching the pumpkin or the turkey, it will be counted as a miss. By pressing on the reset button, the count of the hits and misses will be reset back to zero. By building this game, you will learn how to add timing, random, randomness, and use procedures into your apps. So let's start by giving a name to our project. So the name of this project would be called Pumpkin and Turkey Smash. So let's start with designing our project. I have already added the pictures and the sounds that I'll be using for the project. You can find the links to these pictures and the sound by clicking on the description below. So first, let's add our very first component that is a canvas. So I'm going to go ahead and drag a canvas onto the screen. So we are going to use a canvas to hold our turkey and our pumpkin sprites. So I'm going to make the canvas and I'm going to change the height to be fill parent. And the width is going to be fill parent too. Next, I'm going to add two image press. I'm going to re rename each image price in order to help me to identify the pictures when I'm coding. I'm going to rename the first image price as Decky. And the second image sprite, I'll be renaming it as pumpkin. All right. So next, I'm going to add two horizontal arrangements that will be showing us our head scope and our misses scope. So now I'm going to go to layout and I'm going to add one horizontal arrangement. Next, I'm going to add a label. I'm going to rename this label as heat label. Next, I'm going to add another label onto the horizontal arrangement, which I'm going to rename as heat cut. Good. Next, I'm going to change the properties of these two labels. So I'm going to go ahead and click on the hit label and I'm going to change the text of this hit label to be hit. And I'm going to change the property or the text of the hit count to be zero. Next, I'm going to repeat the same procedure to add a label to hold my Mrs. Cap. I'm going to go ahead and click on a horizontal arrangement. Next, I'm going to add two labels. I'm going to rename this label as Miss Label. The second label I would be renaming it as Miss Cat. So the text for the Miss label would be called Mrs. And the text for the Miss Count would be zero. So next I'm going to add a reset button into our screen. So in order to do that, I'm going to bring a button 
that will be at the very bottom of my screen, which I will be renaming it as reset button. I'm going to change the text of this button to be called reset. Next, I'm going to add a sound component that will be holding my sound. So I'm going to go ahead and click on media, and then I'm going to drag the sound component. Here, I'm going to change the source of this sound component to be, to be more sound. So next, I'm going to add two clock sensors into my app screen, which will be representing the timing components for the turkey and the pumpkin. So let's click on the sensors and let's bring two clock sensors onto the screen. Clock one and clock two. So I'm going to re rename one clock as turkey clock. And the second clock would be renamed as pumpkin clock. Now once we have renamed our clocks, and all other components, we need to add the pictures onto our image sprites. So let's go ahead and click on the turkey image sprite and click on the picture properties and click on the turkey picture. Now it's really big, so in order to resize it, I will be changing the height of the turkey image sprite to be. 50 pixels and width is also going to be 50 pixels. So next I'm going to add the image of the pumpkin sprite. Which I would changing the height to be 50 pixels. And width also going to be 50 pixels. All right, so now once we have done with designing our app, next we are going on to the codes. So let's go ahead and click on the blocks. Now that we have created our mobile app screen, next we are going to create the code blocks. First, we need to create two procedures that would make our image price to move randomly on our screen. So I'm going to click on procedures and I'm going to drag do procedure do block. The first procedure would move our pumpkin. So I'm going to rename the procedure name to be move. Next, I'm going to click on the pumpkin image sprite and I'm going to bring the inbuilt procedure that is called call pumpkin dot move to x and y and then i'm going to snap them together the value x and y belongs to a system called coordinate system which help us to determine the position of an object on the screen x stands for the left and right and y stands for the up and down position so in order to get the random x and y coordinates i'm going to click on the math block and I'm going to drag in the block called random integer one to 100. I'm going to make this to be zero and I'm going to remove the 100 block and put it on the trash bin. So next, in order to keep our image bright appear within the screen, I'm going to consider the canvas width together with the size of my image bright. So I'm going to go ahead and click on the math block and I'm going to drag in the subtraction block onto the empty gap. Next, I'm going to click on the canvas one and I'm going to bring the property block that is K. 
canvas one dot web, which is going to be subtracted by the pumpkin web. So I'm going to repeat the same procedure for the Y, but instead of the width, I'm going to consider the height of the canvas subtracted by the height of my pumpkin spread. I'm going to go ahead and drag in the random integer block and snap them together at Y, make the zero, and I'm going to drag the 100 block into the trash bin. Next, I'm going to drag in the subtraction block inside it. And this time, I'm going to drag in canvas.hide property block that is going to be subtracted with the pumpkin height. So that's the first procedure. So next I'm going to repeat the same steps to make the procedure that would move your turkey sprite. I'm going to create another procedure. So I'm going to drag in two procedure two block and I'm going to rename it as move turkey. Next I'm going to click on the turkey image sprite and I'm going to bring the inbuilt procedure block called call turkey dot move to x and y so next i'm going to click on the math blocks and i'm going to drag in random integer one to 100 i'm going to change this to the zero and i'm going to drag the 100 block into the trash bin next i'm going to drag in the subtraction block and i'm going to consider the canvas width which is going to be subtracted by the width of the turkey image prime. So same goes for the Y coordinate. So I'm going to bring random integer, make it zero. And then I'm going to consider the height of my canvas. And together the height of the turkey. So now once we have created the two procedures that would make our pumpkin and the turkey to appear at random places on the screen, we need to call them when we open up the screen and when the time is running. So I'm going to go ahead and click on the turkey clock and bring the event clock call when turkey done. Timer. And I'm going to call the procedure call move turkey. Same goes for the pumpkin clock. So when I, I'm going to click on the pumpkin clock dot timer. So I'm going to call the move pumpkin procedure. Next, we need to make sure that these two procedures would be running or would be functioning when we open up the screen. So I'm going to go ahead and click on the screen one component and I'm going to add the event block that is called one screen one dot initialize to. And then I'm going to add the two procedures called move pumpkin and move turkey. So next I'm going to program the miss and the hit instructions. So I'm going to click on the canvas and I'm going to bring the event block card when canvas dot touch. So in this step I'm going to program that if you don't hit any of the image sprites, you would get your misses go increase. 
So I'm going to add a conditional if that. And I'm going to add a logic not. And which would be adding the variable. Okay. Touched any sprite. So if I don't touch any of the image sprites, I'm going to make my miscount text to be increasing one by one. So I'm going to click on the miscount block and I'm going to bring the property block called set miscount.text, which is going to add one count. Discount of text. One. One. So now I'm going to make the code block that would give me the instruction to increase my hit score by one when I click on a pumpkin sprite. So I'm going to click on pumpkin and I'm going to bring the event block called when pumpkin dot touch. Next, I'm going to click on the hit score. So I'm going to bring the property set hit count dot text. And then I'm going to add one. So hit count dot text would be changing by a score of one every time when I hit a pumpkin sprite. Next, to make it more interesting, I'm going to add a little sound that would be playing every time when I click on a pumpkin sprite. So I'm going to click on the sound block and I'm going to bring the input procedure call call sound one dot play. So I'm going to repeat the same steps such that when you touch a turkey sprite, you would get a score of five. So I'm going to click on Turkey Image Sprite and I'm going to bring the event block called when turkey dot touch and I'm going to change the hit count by five. So hit count. So the text of the hit count label would be changed by five whenever you hit or whenever you touch a turkey image press. I'm going to make it five. And I'm going to add the sound component. So I'm going to bring the inbuilt block call, call sound one dot two. So now we are going on to the last step of our project. So when you click on the reset button, the hit count and the miss count will be reset back to zero. So I'm going to go ahead and click on reset button and I'm going to bring the event called when reset button dot click. Next, I'm going to give the instructions that the hit count text will be reset back to zero. So I'm going to add the math block zero. And same goes for the miscount. So I'm going to add the miscount.txt block. And it will be changed back to zero whenever you click on the reset button. Awesome. So now we have completed our project for the turkey and pumpkin smash block. Go ahead and click on connect. And if you have an Android phone, you may click on the AI companion or you may click on the emulator to try out the game. So that's all for today. I hope you like this project. Remember to give a thumbs up if you like it and do not forget to hit the subscribe button to get updates on new tutorials. Thank you. Bye-bye.